Howdy, and this is Berna Hasçakır. I'm affiliated with Texas A&M University, and I would like to give a talk about in situ combustion, but this is just an introductory level. So first of all, we should understand that in situ combustion is a thermal enhanced oil recovery method. And you are seeing here the other thermal enhanced oil recovery methods. And in this presentation, we will not be focusing on the other ones. And we are just focusing on the in situ combustion process only. And in order to understand in situ combustion, first we need to understand what is combustion. Uh, in order to accomplish combustion, we need a fuel source, we need an oxidizer, and we need a heat source to initiate uh, reactions. To better understand these processes, uh, I'm just giving some daily life examples. Here you are seeing a paper, you are seeing paper, you are seeing wood, and you are seeing coal. And uh, the fuel source in these examples are paper wood and coal respectively and as an oxidizer what i'm using to burn to combust these materials the oxygen in the air and how i can initiate those chemical reactions i i need a heat source and this heat source is a, either a heater either a lighter or a match in each case so i would like to continue with another daily life example which is explaining in situ combustion very well. And it is a burning cigarette example. I'm not smoking and I'm not uh, uh, in favor of smokers, okay? Uh, and I'm not uh, encouraging smoking, but this daily life example is exactly the same. Uh, what, I, what is happening in this daily life example is exactly the same what's happening during in situ combustion. So it is a great example. So in this example, as we mentioned in the previous slide, I need a fuel source, and my fuel source is tobacco. And then I need a heat source. I'm using a match or a lighter again, and I need an oxidizer, and the oxi oxidizer is the oxygen in the air. So here I am seeing a dark spot. This dark spot has a chemical formula defined as CX carbon, and uh, HX hydrogen. And it is, it is, it is not, the, uh, not the tobacco itself, but it is something else. And this something else is called coke or fuel. So what I mentioned here, I need a fuel source. And the fuel source is tobacco, but the fuel itself is not tobacco. In ISC terminology, it is known as coke. So what is coke? I, I need to understand the meaning of coke as well. And I'm just getting the benefit of my daily life examples. And what you are seeing here is burned materials, uh, bread, wood, a kind of a, a coal. And then these materials are showing me the coke actually. The darker places in, in here is the solid material is called coke and it is carbon rich residue. So throughout in situ combustion, I am actually not burning the oil, but I am burning the fuel. And this fuel burning reaction is creating the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and the water. And at the end, I'm getting an extreme heat. So this foil, the carbon-rich residue, is generating me the energy that I need for my in-situ combustion. So let's return back our example, in-situ combustion daily life example. So it's the cigarette. Why it is very similar to, to the in-situ combustion. So the, our, I would like to remind you again, the foil source is tobacco. The hydrocarbon is tobacco, and in the oil field, it is oil. And then I need an oxidizer, and it is the air, and the oxygen in the air. And in the oil field, what I'm using, I am using ox also ox uh, air, and mainly I'm compressing the air and I'm sending it on, under the ground. And here for this example, I need a heat source, to initiate reactions and it is lighter and for the 
for the field scale, it is a downhole heater. So this lighter is used to initiate the reactions. Then I am generating a, a lighter inside the process, and this is called combustion front. So if I will just compare this case, which is this burning cigarette example with, with in-situ combustion. So this is my air injection, and this is my gas production uh, portion. And this is my injection well, and this is my production well, actually. And what I'm seeing here, I'm seeing a hot zone. This hot zone is my in-situ lighter. So I always need a heat source. And this heat source, the lighter or the downhole heater is created by the combustion process by itself. And it is called combustion front in ISC terminology. And then I have this coke zone. This coke zone is meeting with this high temperature zone and the air. And again, it's burning and generating carbon dioxide mainly and water vapor. And I'm, I'm seeing that the, in, the, in the cigarette example, I cannot touch the tip of the cigarette because it is very hot. It, is, it has very high temperature. If you are not an SI person, SI unit system person, so this is around like 1000 Fahrenheit, um, but you can easily touch uh, a few millimeter away of this, this hot zone. How come you cannot touch here and it's 1,000 Fahrenheit or around 600 Celsius, but a few meet, a millimeter away, you can easily touch it. Or a smoker is not burning its lips. How it can happen, it is the beauty of in-city combustion. So it is generating the uh, high heat, and this high heat is getting consumed by the coke zone, coke burning reactions and coke formation reaction. And the other beauty of in-city combustion is in-city combustion is upgrading the fuel source. The hydrocarbon initially was tobacco, but now the, that hydrocarbon uh, turned into gas and the smoker, what smoker did? Smoker just um, exhausted uh, those ca carbon dioxide. And then in the lung of the smoker, what we are seeing is a tar formation and it's causing cancer. That's why it's not recommended. Uh, but it is now no longer tobacco. Tobacco is a solid hydrocarbon. However, tar accumulated in the smoker's lung is, uh, is no longer solid, but it is liquid. So which means that the solid hydrocarbon is upgraded to the liquid hydrocarbon called tar in the smoker's lung. And what left behind? How this upgrading happened because we left behind the ash on the reservoir rock. So this is also just showing the smoker lungs, how the, how the tar is just accumulated in the smoker lungs. And we are not recommended recommending the uh, smoking. Okay, so let's return back again our uh, initial question. What is combustion? And I gave you paper combustion, wood combustion, and coal combustion ex example. And if you would like to burn these materials, we know that it is extremely easy to burn paper, but very difficult to burn coal. So what it means that the minimum energy required to start chemical reactions are different for these hydrocarbons. They are all hydrocarbons like oil itself, but if we would like to burn them, it's not easy. And if we are living papers, uh, wood or coal, open in the atmosphere, they are not burning either. So, but uh, for the combustion, we need a hydrocarbon, uh, we need a fuel source, and we need oxidizer. So it is not sufficient. We need one more component to initiate the combustion reactions, and it is called the minimum energy. It is called the ignition temperature. And what we are seeing, the ignition temperature is less here and more here. So there should be a kind of a barrier then to start this chemical reaction, this minimum energy barrier. And the other thing that I am just checking, if 
I will burn paper to heat myself, to heat my house, uh, I will see that it is generating low heating. And then when, if I would like to burn coal to heat it up the house, then it will give more heat. So also there are kind of a, uh, like reactions are easy to start here. Reactions are difficult to start here, but at the end I'm getting low heat, but I'm getting high heating value here. So the calorific values are different in, in these three cases, and it is increasing this way. And it means that the coal burning generates more heat than paper burning reactions. Like in the oil as well, we will have different quality of the oil, and they, their quality differences in the calorific values will create different energies. So if I would like to return back to my original example, what I said first, it is easy to burn paper, very difficult to burn uh, coal. And there is a barrier to initiate those reactions. And these are called, it is called activation energy barrier. And it is uh, denoted with E sub E A. And this energy barrier, is just here I have reactants. What is my reactants? My fuel source, it is either paper, it is either coal, wood, tobacco, or the oil. And the products are like my carbon dioxide, my, uh, uh, my carbon monoxide, my water, and then I'm generating the energy, the heating value that I'm generating. And what is happening? Here in the coke zone, I am just, uh, I, I need this activation energy barrier. I need to reach this barrier, okay? Then I will just go down because this combustion front will start to, to burn the, the uh, coke itself and generate, generate it. This heat will be then used sorry, then it will be consumed in the next zone. So this will sweep the entire cigarette like that. So the energy generated here will be consumed for the formation of new, new coke. And this way we will sweep the entire cigarette and uh, the produced oil, uh, produced tar will be accumulated in the smoker's lung. What we talk about the activation energy barrier. Activation energy barrier is all about auto ignition temperature. And this graph is showing the auto ignition temperature of uh, normal alkanes or paraffinic hydrocarbons, straight chain hydrocarbons, saturated hydrocarbons here. So what you are seeing here, as the hydrocarbon is having more and more chain, more and more carbon atom, that it should be straight chain, the ignition temperature is dropping. And then, and then we are just checking, this is, this is the carbon number, with the carbon number, increased carbon number in a normal chain, hydro, uh, hydrocarbons, paraffinic hydrocarbons, the ignition temperature is uh, reducing, but let's check this, this, and this one, okay? They are all no-name. No-name means C9, and they, they have the same closed chemical formula, C9, H20, all of these chemicals. But if it is straight chain, then it is, it's having a kind of a lower ignition temperature, and if we are having more, more branch chain uh, hydrocarbons, then their ignition temperatures are increasing. So if we have oils, uh, if we have in the oil composition more like these structures, then the combustion process will be very easy because their uh, combustion will occur very low temperatures. But if we are having a kind of a uh, branch chain, then it will be very difficult. And if we are dealing with a natural gas reservoir, the ignition temperature will be very high. 
And in the, in the oil reservoir, we know that we have the combination of all of them, plus we have aromatic hydrocarbons, different structures uh, in the crude oil. So it is extremely complicated to understand the auto-ignition. And if we are dealing with very high auto-ignition temperatures, what should we do? And this graph is telling us that. So this red line is just showing us at which temperature the ignition is starting. Let's say for, for methane, it is 550 Celsius. So we are coming here. This is my methane combustion pressure, okay? And what I would do, if I will increase the pressure along this line, what would happen? The combustion temperature, auto-ignition temperature of methane will decrease. So I should be really increasing a lot the, uh, the pressure of methane reservoirs so I can ignite those reservoirs um, at a lower temperature. And this is called high-pressure air injection. And how, how we are determining really the success of an IST in situ combustion experiment and in situ combustion processes. So we are doing a fueling gas analysis technique and how we are doing it by conducting a combustion tube experiment. Here you are seeing the combustion tube dimensions for different um, um, uh, universities or the different uh, research facilities. University of Calgary, Stanford University, Amoco, Texaco, ESO, as determining the length, the acceptable length for uh, for combustion tube, and this is given in feet and in meter, and the diameter of the combustion tube given in meat, uh, in inch, and given in centimeter, and the wall thickness of the combustion tube. And how we are conducting, uh, really, so the these experiments, this is where I am placing my combustion tube right here and then I'm wrapping it with an insulation material. So I will be zooming this portion. So this is my combustion tube, and this is my heater location, which means I need a, I need a carbon source or foil source, and my carbon foil source is inside this tube, which is an oil and sand mixture from my reservoir. And I need an oxidizer, my oxidizer is right here, and I need an igniter. Igniter is my band heater. What I am doing first, I need to reach the ignition temperature. And I have shown you the ignition temperatures are very high for, uh, for oils. And it is in the order of like 400 Celsius to 500 Celsius. So I'm trying to reach that temperature, the 400 and 500 Celsius at the injection point, like in the cigarette example. And I'm just heating up under nitrogen injection. So once the heater location reached very high temperatures, 400, 500 Celsius, then what I'm doing, I'm switching to air. And then this air uh, is just creating a lighter inside the combustion tube. And then I am producing oil and I'm just recording my temperature distribution uh, along this tube and my gas analyzes analyzer. And what you are seeing here, a typical temperature profile collected in time, and also plus the effluent gas analysis. So this is my heater location. So this temperature distribution is my, uh, is giving uh, the temperature at the heater location. And then you're seeing right here, and that is given with this curve, the temperature distribution. And I have many thermocouples between these two locations. And those thermocouples readings are just shown with those graphs. And it, it means that I'm reaching a combustion front temperature and then I'm sweeping away the oil. And here you are seeing the coke zone and this is the unsweeped zone. And this is the clean burnt uh, sand. So the initial sample was something like that, and it swept the entire thing. And as you can see from the combustion tube itself, the front came all the way till here. The, the, to the color of the stainless steel uh, combustion tube is changed because. 
And uh, you're seeing here a successful versus unsuccessful in situ combustion tests. In the successful case, the temperature is propagating at every temper temperature measurement location, but in the unsuccessful case, the temperature is fading away and we are not seeing that the combustion front is propagating. In this case, my heat generation is greater than the energy barrier that I need to exceed. But here, what I'm seeing, my heat generation is less than the energy barrier, so it's not sustaining. Similarly, I am seeing very similar trend for the combustion, uh, combustion gas production. In the successful experiment, I'm seeing high carbon dioxide generation around 10%. And the unsuccessful case, my combustion carbon dioxide production is less. And I'm producing mainly oxygen. But here I am consuming the oxygen. So these are how I am interpreting if I have an, a successful or unsuccessful in-situ combustion case. Other way to determine the in-situ combustion success is called reaction kinetics experiments and determine with the TGA DSC analyzer. And TGA DSC means, TGA means the weight loss in temperature. So we are just placing a sample, we are increasing the temperature and we are recording how much uh, weight has been lost when we are increasing the temperature. And DSC is giving us the heat flow curve. Uh, we can use different uh, heating rates to generate this. And what we are doing, we are taking this heating rates from our combustion tube experiments and mimicking it in TGA DSC to determine what? The endothermic region, heat consumption region, uh, which is mainly due to uh, water evaporation. And then we have coal formation region. We are we are seeing also coke burning reactions, and these are all helping us to understand at which temperature range we are burning the coke, we are forming the coke, and also we can just analyze the um, analyze the uh, area under the curve to to calculate the activation energy barrier and calculate the heat generation. So as you can understand that in-situ combustion is very complex, not easy. Uh, we, are, uh, we are not applying it because it is complex and not easy to control. However, it is extremely promising. As you can see, and here's just, um, this is my initial sample, okay? And this is the initial coke formation and it is sweeping entirely everything. It is white sand. And also we are accomplishing a kind of an institute upgrading here. So the viscosity is around like 60,000 centipoise for the initial sample and then produced with sample is in the order of 100 centipoise. So it, the mobility is enhanced a lot. So these are all for the introduction of institute combustion. I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any question, uh, please do not regret, uh, do, do, not, do not hesitate to ask those questions. Thanks for your attention.